Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. It's Mark from Cricket Info and today we're doing one of the classic shapes, Laver and Wood MH6D. This is a replica of the classic Millichamp and Hall signature that Julian Millichamp was making in the mid 90s. And you can see here we've got the dowels straight after this. We'll have a look at it. So thank you very much to David who sent in heaps of bats over the years for me to have a look at. Most recently the Grey Nichols Ultimate in the Stuart Kranzbuehler personal favourite profile. This is bat has actually been prepared by Laver and Wood. It was made last year during lockdown I would say and it's that classic shape. Got here a really low middle but really it's not favouring anywhere it's just one long playing area. We have a smaller edge, lots of wood down here low and the classic dowels down here, which were actually put in at an angle uh, to save a little bit of weight in that area. Remember in the 90s when they were making bats, they weren't kiln drying, they were naturally dried. These days they secondary dry bats, saving up to 20% more weight than previously through natural drying. But obviously there are some drawbacks, it can lead to durability issues as we're seeing in modern bats these days. They perish quite easily. It's not looking to win any medals as far as the size of the edge. Uh, it's very much about the traditional cricketer, somebody who's playing with a very straight bat and it's going to get maximum value for the shots out of the middle anywhere along the length of the playing area. It's got the classic things that you see in the um, Screaming Cats and Millie Champion Hall Bats, you've got that really oval shape handle. Probably Julian's handles were probably a bit thicker, but um, really nice shape, um, feels lovely. And I do like these latex grips that Laver and Wood uh, put on their bats. This has got the classic stickers, you can get the shield stickers uh, when you purchase. And one of the things about buying from a bat maker like Laver and Wood is that you can be very specific about what type of handle you want. They do dif uh, three different types. They have a carbon insert handle. They have one with a counterbalance. Uh, and they also have um, the traditional handle setup, which this one's got. And then you can be very specific about uh, the shape of the face. They do two, two different types of uh, pressing. You can specify them to copy a bat that you've got if you send them some photos or even send them the bat. They can do all that and say what shape. Laver and Wood are very good at hitting the requested shape and you've got all the different grades of willow. This is the reserve which is second from the top and this would be landed in Australia with knocking for under $900. And just have a look at the willow quality. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine and a bit of a tenth grain down the outside edge. This has been pre-prepared and knocked and the finishing of Laver and Wood's bats is something to behold. It is nothing particularly this side of the globe. There's no bat makers doing them uh, in this sort of finish, in my opinion. Uh, it's just smooth to the touch. Yeah, I really like the way they finish bats. They're up there with the best in the business. And James Laver himself is a master bat maker. So you've got that experience. Uh, and you've also got Toby Richardson there, who's excellent bat maker in his own right. So yeah, I love that low middle. Just look how low it is. Let's have a look at the specifications uh, before I drone on about that for too long. We'll start at the shoulders. It is very narrow up here, but don't forget it has been pre-prepared, so that has been knocked up here. So I'm getting about 12 millimeters there. At the top of the splice, getting 39. Up here at the edge, remember that is rounded slightly and knocked, probably around a 20 25, 26 mil edge there. Down here at the toe, where you've got that lovely toe guard that Laver and Wood do, uh, we're looking at 22.7, and center here, 29.6. Width wise, have a look at that. Uh, it's, well, that says 108.7, and that's got the scuff sheet on, so there's nothing wrong with that. Spine. Now, I'll just put it through the gauge so you can see some other uh, features. So we've got that really small edge by today's standards. Remember, this is replicating a 1990s bat, not a 2010 bat. So you can see the difference in the gauge there. You can see that lovely full shape. It's not touching the top of the spine and it's sacrificing a little bit 
on the face as well. There's probably a millimetre there. Um, flat uh, but rounded at the edges that face is. And we're probably sacrificing maybe three mil there. So try and get an accurate height of that spine for you. And that's about 64. Uh, the handle up here, you can see there you've got that oval, so it's 39 there, but it's really it's much narrower at 32 at the bottom there, and it's round at the top. This has got lovely binding on it. You've got the cork inserts and plenty of glue put in there on the binding so that you've got a bit of counterweight and also no chance that that's going to fall apart. Uh, some bat makers tend to not glue over the top and that can lead to the bats uh, splitting up there and, and losing its feel. They glue the splice with a marine epoxy. So these can feel a lot stiffer when you're breaking them in, particularly with the pressing. They, they have a much firmer press, but once they're going, I've seen these absolutely fly, uh, particularly when middle. Uh, the ball just goes for miles and miles. So we'll go straight into the pickup. And as far as this bat goes, I think I'm picking up 287 something like that, something like I would use. It's not a heavy bat uh, by any stretch of the imagination. And what does it actually weigh? It weighs 291. Yeah, really nice. I, I do like um, the feel of that. Um, it does feel like a bat that if you're not swinging across the line and losing your shape, you'll get a lot of runs with it. Let's tap it up starting from the toe. Look at it going there. Pull through there. Yeah, it's got a lovely hitting area through here, about 20 centimeters long. It's not a wide middle, but remember this has been knocked as well. Um, so, questions. A lot of people think knocking in is playing in, knocking in is not playing in. Knocking in is preparing the surface so that it will be durable against a really hard cricket ball, particularly the new one. It only hardens up probably the top millimeter of surface, maybe a little bit uh, more if you've got a softer press bat. But the actual play in process is where the bat reaches its peak and that can be different for different types of bats. These bats will have a longer play-in process, so you expect, you know, if you bought one of these um, now and had it through the pre-season, it will be going by the time you, you hit at uh, the beginning of the season. But if you buy it at the beginning of the season, you expect you won't be seeing the best of it till probably Christmas. So that's the way these types of bats work. Gun and more bats are very much the same. And there are other bat makers who choose to go for that traditional style press rather than try and give you something that's going to give you instant gratification, but not last, fall apart within a thousand runs, two thousand runs. These bats can last years and years. So thank you very much to David for sending this in. I always love to see Laver and Wood bats, particularly this one, this classic shape with the dowels. And uh, if you do like what I do, remember every bat that comes in is actually sent by the owner. They pay the freight to me and the return freight. I don't charge for the reviews. So what you see is my opinion. I leave handling the bat until the night of the actual review so that you get a true impression of what I actually think about it. And it's my first impression. It's not the same impression as the guy who's going to be using it and feeling it play in. It's just uh, the benefit of me who's handled many, many bats. So there you go. If you like what I do, consider subscribing. We're approaching 9,000. See you on the next video. This has been a Laver and Wood MH6D Reserve.